Hi, it's Tubal Kane again, your YouTube shop teacher. And the purpose of this video is to show you a, a new acquisition that I've got, or it's coming tomorrow, and that is a closing milling machine, horizontal, and it's being donated to me by Chuck from uh, near Detroit, Michigan, who works for Ford Motor Company. And uh, he's donating it for the good of the cause, along with some tooling and, a, and just a bunch of cutters and arbors and things. So I'm really excited about this. And you'll eventually see it in uh, uh, future videos. And uh, when he comes tomorrow, I'm going to take some footage when he backs in and all that. So we'll check that out. Maybe you'll enjoy this. And then I'll give you just a little preview of what this machine uh, looks like. It's going to be in rather uh, dirty conditions. It came out of a factory and uh, never did get a final cleanup. So, but I think you'll like it. And, uh, I know I'm going to like it. It is wired for three-phase uh, 440 volts, so I, I will have to struggle with that. But uh, I'll see you tomorrow when uh, Chuck pulls in. It's about a five or six hour drive, and he's coming with his son and a good friend who also worked in the automotive industry. So, see you tomorrow. At some point in time, there's got to be one that you really... Not really. Well, it looks good, Chuck. Okay. Uh, it, the origins are unknown. You know offhand if it's three-phase, I would think it's it is, probably... It yeah. is indeed, yeah. They did offer them uh, in a single, single phase. This, this came out of a, uh, a factory in Jackson, Michigan that was making aircraft fittings. Well, anything over two, you can't lift it anyway. You got to lift it. Come on. No more feet, man. I'll be darned. Um, do you want? I just shorten the chain on it, and that'd probably be perfect. No, you go higher. No, so we're in as far as we go. Yeah. Greece and South Africa has been in the work. Try up a little bit more. Yeah. And it's, it's almost there. Boink. So hang on. If I move this, move this out of the way. We're airborne. You gonna come all the way out now? Huh? Yeah.
So how do we get it off the pallet then? You're going to need the hook arm. We can move this over there. Oh yeah, we'll just move over there. Yeah, we'll get it right How easy down a little more. Just get her almost on the floor. There you go. That's good. Okay. Now, grab on. I think it'll go down, yeah. I think it'll be fine down. Ooh. Yeah, I feel a lot better now that it's on the ground. <laughs> yeah, I think we can wrestle it from there. Oh no, you? it'll move. It'll it'll skate right on this concrete, no problem. Sure. Sure. Look at that. Wow. Just like it was drawn up in the playbook. <laughs> well, Just that, like they I tell you, that hoist it. made it pretty easy, didn't it? Like yeah, it, it uh, was made for lifting up engines, so. Well, Chuck and Gene are back in Detroit by now, and I have to tell you thank you very much, Chuck, for doing this, not only donating, but bringing it down and unloading it and all the extra work that you went uh, to for me. And uh, I, I'm sure YouTube viewers will appreciate this as well. Now this is model 8540 Clausing Horizontal Mill. And he gave me two manuals here, or reproductions. And he said there's one to use and one to lose. And I see there is a wiring diagram in here, which is going to be quite helpful when I change the voltage back to 220 volt from the 440. Complete parts list, lubrication information, and all of that is in this manual. So that's going to be quite helpful. And this is probably a machine made about in the mid-70s, 1975 or so. The milling machine table is about 26 inches long and 6 inches wide. And it looks like there are 5 8 T slots in there. I'm not sure. I'll have to check. Now the spindle is a number 30 milling machine taper. Typical, well, where's my sample here? Looks like this. And a drawbar holds it in. So that is a what we call a non-self-holding uh, taper. And it's got the lugs in here that do the driving. This is a 1 inch diameter. The arbor is supported by two rather hefty looking uh, rods here that go into these two holes and this is the support which uh, fastens farther down here. Okay, uh, let me pull that uh, collet holder out and show you what that looks like. And it came complete with all the cranks. Extra crank there, I think, is for a vise. A vise was not included. The collet holder is by Universal Tool with that, num again, number 30 milling machine taper. And it uses the double Z collets, ZZ. And there's about 10 or 12 of them included. All the sizes I would need, I hope. Also, I didn't show you, these are all the different collars for that uh, long arbor. And then a, a rather large selection of shims, including some made by Desteco, Arbor Spacer. I didn't know Desteco made that kind of product. I'm just thinking of their toggle clamps. Also included, uh, where did I put it? I'm already losing things. This is also a universal tool collet holder, but it's a relatively large shank, so I don't believe that belongs with this machine unless this unscrews right here. There's one collet in there right now. I owned a machine exactly like this when I bought my machinery from Joliet Township High School about 15 or 20 years ago, including my bridge port. One of these was included in the bid, but I had no room for it. This garage did not exist at that time. 
and I didn't think I could get it in the basement, so I turned around and sold it and been kicking myself in the behind ever since. But you can see that it, although the machine is dirty, it's uh, in pretty nice condition. I, I'm sure it was used for production, and there is a power feed as well. I'm thinking this machine must weigh about 800 pounds because I was able to rotate it here by myself by pulling the arbor supports out a little bit here to give myself a, a handle, if you will, so I could rotate it by 90 degrees. But looking at the machine from this side, you can see that it has the typical clausing speed control, not unlike the one on my clausing lathe. And then down here, this gearbox is the uh, controller for the power feed, and here's the drive shaft. And we've got a one and a half horse motor under here, which I have to rewire, I just mentioned that. And it looks like we got about a dozen speeds here for the uh, longitudinal feed. There is no power feed for the cross feed. And I still am not familiar with the controls. Now, Clausing does make a vertical milling machine, or did, as well. So, and I think there's a back gears right here. I'll have to go through the manual and study that tonight. That's a 440 volt uh, three-phase plug. I've never seen one like that. That will have to go. But on that end we have a crank for the longitudinal feed, but on uh, this end it's like a rapid uh, geared one. Kind of nice. It's got all the different table locks, but it is filthy dirty, so I'm going to spend considerable time cleaning this up. But what amazes me is this. Notice that my neighbors immediately started mowing when they saw me go in here with my camera. All right, what amazes me is that the table is perfect. There is not a single blemish or uh, cut mark or anything else on the table and, and uh, no vandalism. I'm used to seeing vandalism, but none on uh, this table, so I'm real pleased with that. Time will tell if I, if I clean this up. Perhaps there's some hidden damage, but I sure don't see any at my cursory uh, examination. It certainly is a miniature mill compared to the big Kearney and Trekker like Adam has, but I don't have room for something like that or any way to move it around, so I'm very satisfied with this size, but what originally uh, prompted Chuck to get a hold of me, I think, is I had been to an auction and I saw one of those little Atlas milling machines and I think it's probably only one-fourth this size or one-third this size and I started to bid on it and decided it was too small I didn't really want it so I let it go to uh, the man from Lost Creek Machinery uh, is who bought it and uh, so I'm uh, then I was looking at these and Lost Creek and other used machinery dealers get quite a, a large price for a machine like this and sometimes without any accessories so I'm uh, really happy and thankful to Chuck to get a hold of this, but my whole purpose for this, and this is an unheated garage, is that next spring I plan on doing a video series on uh, the horizontal mill, not unlike my video series on how to run a bridge port. So that's the master plan for that, if I live that long. Chuck said that there must be at least a hundred cutters that uh, are going to go with this, and I think he's right. There's all of that. Two of those nice uh, spanner wrenches, but he lifted this all by himself out of the truck, but it must weigh 150 pounds. I can't budge it. I just had to slide it around. But among these rather humongous uh, cutters, and many of them are either brand new or have been sharpened and still have the uh, wax dip on them, but digging under some of the bigger ones there's just a lot of the smaller ones so there's a lifetime supply of milling cutters here, wow and they all appear to be one inch diameter uh, holes It'll fit on that one inch diameter arbor because I noticed that those arbors are very expensive if you have to buy one. But uh, looking down there, you can see that this is really a, a fine stash 
of cutters. I haven't examined them all, they're just too many. Well, that concludes this little uh, video here, an introduction to this new machine of mine. You'll be seeing a lot more of it. I hope you liked the video, and I'll see you soon. This is Tubal Kane saying so long for now.